Hey everybody, the 100th episode of the r r Show is brought to you by Arcane Wonders and their new stock market simulation, Vegetable Stock. Roel, why don't you tell us about it? Thanks, Richard. Uh, this is a fun uh, game published by Arcane Wonders, our sponsor. Uh, you've got broccoli, carrots, eggplants, and whatnot. And what you're trying to do is manipulate the market so you earn the most money on your vegetables. So you have various vegetables. And uh, as you can see, they're very cute art. And it's a card-based game. You're playing cards into the tableau and hoping that you can bump up the market to make all that coin. But if not, then you may go bust. But it's a lot of fun. I played it, the original version a couple of years ago. And I can't wait for this version to come up real soon from Arcane Wonders. That's vegetable stuff. Talk. And hello, friends. This is episode 100. We did it. Hello, everybody. I'm Ruel. We've got Richard. We've got Ray. And we've got Chris and Balloons. Richard, oh, yeah. it's been a while since you've been here live. This is a real treat, my friend. Thanks for joining us. Oh, yeah. And I think you're kind of regretting it since this is like take four of the show because <laughs> everything keeps falling apart. I, I'm bringing some bad mojo somehow. I think I, my R should be struck from the title to celebrate. Um, uh, well, yeah. you know, it's the wonders of the Internet. But we are so glad uh, that you're here, Richard. And um, Chris, you had balloons. Uh I mean, it's yeah. nothing but balloons. You know, and, I'm bringing out, I'm bringing yeah. out all the personalized effects over here. You know, <laughs> yep. I'm ready. I'm ready to 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 send off this this rockin' R and R show in Whoa. style. Whoa! Okay, wow. we are we are ready to go. It's gonna be an explosive time. <laughs> Um, when we're talking about our favorite publishers, which I am thrilled to do, I have so much excitement to talk about all my favorite publishers and all the honorable mentions. This was a tough list to do. Yes. Even top 20 doesn't yep. feel like it is enough. No, because agreed. there are so many great publishers out there. Yeah. Um, but here's the cream of the crop. And then I also have the cream of the crop of the honorable mention. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, there'll be a big honorable mention this time at the end yeah. of the show, folks. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, folks, uh, by the way, we are doing a giveaway. So um, if you're watching this on YouTube, we want you to um, go to the comments click just comment hello or whatever just place a comment in the uh, um, description below and you're gonna be entered to win a pair of tickets to pax unplugged uh this december yet two look. it's gonna be two passes three day passes and there are a pair of them wow so, yeah we're gonna give away a total of four tickets uh two eats to two different winners so comment um well, you know what why don't we give like a special word so why don't you comment well, no, I, actually i would say comment and tell us your favorite publisher quite frankly boom yeah. There it is. Do it. Thank you. Yeah. Richard. Also, make sure to include the secret phrase. Uh, I love Chris. He's my favorite <laughs> member of the R and R show. Uh, it doesn't have to be all one word. It doesn't have to be all one word. But is if it, it caps? You, caps I sensitive hear or not? That might yeah. get you an extra entry. I'm not sure. Yep. There it, uh, is. it has to be caps. all caps on the all love. Caps, all yeah. caps uh, gets you maybe yes. two additional <laughs> entries. Who knows? Yeah. I can't promise that. Allegedly, right. that's what I've heard. Allegedly. But, yep. um, yes. And yeah. But but you also have to talk about your favorite publisher. And Chris. And yes. their best game. And their, and their best, best game. game. Yes. Yeah. So if publisher you want to be entered, best game. down in the comments, <laughs> your favorite publisher and their best game, because uh, that's what we're here to do. And um, yeah, we are. there are so many that we're not talking about. We want more love yes, to be spread. absolutely. I don't know if you can yeah. make an animated bunch of hearts, can you? Smarty iPhone guy. Oh, he can do oh, it right there. Of course he can. <laughs> oh, look at that. Oh, my God. <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> It's uh, one of the only things I had left. He <laughs> just managed to pick the right thing. I love <laughs> it. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, everybody. Uh, this is Future Auto here jumping in with a quick correction uh, because there's a slight change to how to enter to win those uh, PAX Unplugged tickets. Basically, go to gleam.rotto.com, H-E-T-P colon slash slash gleam.rotto.com and follow the directions there. You can do several different things. It's almost kind of a little uh, scavenger hunt. You can do lots of entries to actually up your chances of winning. And now, by all means, still comment Comment down below who your favorite publishers are and what the best game from those publishers are because we still want to send out the love. I can't even do the thing, and I. But uh, definitely, still make those comments. We want to hear from you. But if you want to enter, head over to gleam.rado.com. Okay, back to past us.
<laughs> and uh, friends, we are recording this live on Twitch. So for all of our friends watching on Twitch, be sure when the YouTube video goes up to come back to the YouTube video and comment with a publisher and uh, the game there. Okay. So mm-hmm. yep. with that all out of the way, uh, I'm really excited to talk about this. Uh, any other thoughts before we jump in the list? Because Chris is going to start us off. Yes. Go. I'm chomping at the bit. Okay. Let's, let's mm-hmm. chomp at that bit. Chris, let's <laughs> let's start with our collective number 20. That was horrible. Our collective number 20 uh, brings... Uh, I just filmed a video that's going to be on my channel room board, uh, which I'm really excited about, about the complete history of this game uh, and like a buying guy because there is so much of this game. And luckily, oh, wow. one of my best friends has everything uh, and plays it constantly. It's like his number two game of all time. Uh, this is Aeon's End from Indie Board and Cards. Oh. Uh, yeah. And I just think... Like Aeon's End had to be the pick for uh, uh, also they, they're doing some neat vegetable art with Aeon's End, I think. But I think now <laughs> we're here. We're here. Um, Aeon's End had to be the pick for Indie Board and the Cards because they have now eight waves of content. Their latest uh, game found campaign was called The Descent. And over through this overarching thing, you have like. 18 different boxes, maybe 21 different different boxes of like mini expansions and uh, large standalone expansions. And all of it is great. And so I, yeah. I, I just filmed this with my buddy Zach and we were talking about it. And I was like, yeah, I, it, it reminded me about like how consistent the content is uh, for Aeon's End and how solid a system <clears throat> it is. I really love it as a co-op deck builder. Uh, I think it's a fun puzzle. And it's, it's really extraordinary to see like a game Uh, where they do the credits and everyone's stuck and one person is like walking around. That's what I feel like right now. Wow. Who knows? It was just a day. Maybe sometimes, it's a solar flare. Trust me. Okay. I yeah. Sometimes that just happens. Great. Hey, this is fun. All right. Well, we should um, be back, but I'm going to give it a a, a, a second. And yeah. then I'll jump back in. Okay. Um, As you were. As you were, yeah. Uh, but yeah, the I was talking a little bit about, uh, after that momentary blip, I was talking a bit about how much content there is and and how seamlessly it has been sort of integrated. But the other things from Indie Board and Cards that I really love are Coup and The Resistance. Like Avalon is one of my top games as well. Yep. Uh, I, I just... Like they also have Flashpoint, which I'm not like the huge, hugest like fan of Flashpoint, but I I like it enough. Uh, but it's sort of like the ripples of seeing it on the side of like uh, Coup and Avalon, and then them coming out with just like a really solid deck builder, getting the social deduction side and a, a lovely gamut of just really great content. Uh, I'm always excited to see the indie board and cards pop up on Kickstarter or something. I'm always excited to see what they've got going on. Uh, I think they had a couple small boxes of like the Sherlock files. I feel like that was indie board <laughs> cards as yeah. well. And like, I think that was a neat like twist on the escape game genre. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I just think they're a really solid company and, and they produce a lot of really nice work. And I, I like seeing their name pop up. And so when I was thinking about my own personal list, I was trying to think about uh, publishers who's sort of has a, a breadth of uh, content that I really enjoy. And Indie Board and Cards was for sure up there for me. Yeah, yeah. Nice, yeah, yeah. nice choice, Chris. Uh, really nice choice. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. I was going to say, now, have you played Astro Knights, uh, Chris? Oh, yeah, yeah. Astro Knights is great. I mean, it's Aeon's End just with a rotating yep. variable market. Uh, and I'm excited yeah. about the Invincible version of Astro Knights. That's it's great. Coming out. Yeah. It's fantastic. Mm-hmm. I, I have am, played yeah. Invincible. I, yeah. I imagine it would be sort of the best starting off point for the Astro yep. system if somebody was going to jump in. That would be I would say so. I would, I would say, um, it, it actually, if anything, maybe it's, well, some of the characters are simpler. Some of them are a bit more complex. But I mean, yeah. honestly, if you just love superheroes, it's, it's definitely worth checking out. Yeah. And also, as an aside, when you say any board and cards, you're not just talking about that. You're talking about the Stronghold Library, too, because, of yeah, course, the right. two companies merge. Right. So Absolutely. then you're bringing in Terraforming Mars stuff. You're bringing in yeah. such a huge wealth of amazing games. Yeah, it's well, a no-brainer to put on the list. Yeah, that also brings up another kind of challenge with this list because of the way publishing works. Oh, my gosh, uh, it yes. It was yeah. actually... Like I, I, as someone 
someone who works on the publisher side of stuff, I was like, oh, this will be easy. And then I was going into BGD. I'm like, well, they distributed the game. They didn't actually make it. So I like, yeah. I tried to attribute games to publishers where like it was a game that was originally published with one publisher, but so yeah. there's so many right. acquisitions and distribution contracts. It gets confusing very quick very quick yeah. oh yeah strictly speaking can, my number one yeah. publisher is korea board games and yeah. like three italian publishers and a brazilian <laughs> right. publisher i've never yeah. heard of because they have done every game in the world by bringing it into their own territory exactly right. yeah. yeah yeah it's but so it, obviously I can we're imagine, thinking about yeah, yeah of, of course of course um but i can imagine as like if you're new to the hobby like going on the list of bgg of all the games that a publisher is tagged and you're like what the like all these mm. publishers how did seven publishers make cascadia it's like well it's because it was distributed by <laughs> yeah, yeah. publishers so yep. just a side note to why this list is also kind of tricky yeah that's a great yeah. point ray and um ray uh as you're talking a lot about publishers oh, why don't we I'm go yapping. to our number 19 uh, number 19 yeah, since, you, <laughs> since you're yapping, <laughs> since you're yapping. <laughs> Yeesh. i didn't say that. Uh, all right <laughs> <laughs> uh, my our, our number 19 I wanted to get this early on my list so you can all get your grumbling about my bias out of the way <laughs> um, I do as I mentioned uh, I do uh, I do work on the publisher side of the industry and I do currently work full time for a publisher and I think it'd be weird if I didn't like them so I did put the op games on this list and I think you I can think grumble that's reasonable. Get, get your grumbling out of the way I don't but think I there's wouldn't... any grumbling needed really. <laughs> I think no. the op has a solid uh, has a solid history and is really <laughs> emerging and pushing forward into the hobby space. And I've seen a lot of that over the past year. And yeah. like, they would have been on my short list too, just Same. because I've gotten to see so much just by virtue of having you here uh, as a, as a co-host of the show. Uh -huh. um, yeah. Well, I'm glad to hear that. I think yeah. um, I was very, I was very picky when I was switching, like what publisher to go to next. I looked at a lot of options and I settled on the op for a reason. I think the op is entering into a very interesting more hobby focused era, which mm -hmm. is really cool to see with the success of Gnome Hollow as well as Stock Exchange and distributing European games like Aqua um, and Flip 7, new brand yeah. new party games that are completely new designers that are, are really hitting the market really well. But of course my favorite game from the op, I did pick as Telestrations. I feel like it really embodies what the op does well. I think yeah. even now as we are transitioning into a slightly more hobby-esque games, we are still established as like, the company that makes great entry level games, like great gateway yeah. games. And you can come into the hobby from several different points. You can come into it from Harry Potter Hogwarts battle deck building game, which I get so many comments all the time that that is people's first real deck building game. You can come at it from the party standpoint. I think Telestrations is a great point for that. You can also come at it from light hobby games like Gnome Hollow. Um, and these games, the op games, especially the party game lines, have been a staple in my household since long before I ever worked for the publisher. Um, so, yeah, that is our number 19, the op. I just think that we make some of the best entry level games in, in the hobby, some of the best gateway games. And, yeah, it is biased, so feel free to discount that for that reason. But I feel like it'd be weird if I didn't love and back the games that I work for, like I- mm -hmm. That would yeah. be a very sad that story. That would be weird, it really would. right? Yeah. So I put them low down because I am biased, but again, I took my time picking what publisher I wanted to move to after I left CGE. And I picked the op for a reason. I think we make really high quality uh, family friendly games. So yeah, that's my yeah. number 19. I think yeah. you're always talking about great party games. And I know that's like your your genre too, oh, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And yeah. so mm -hmm. I think like the op houses so many of those yeah. as well. It, it is yeah. not a strange thing. And I think it is completely <laughs> justified. And I think you're too apologetic. You might as well, well be living here in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that. Yeah. You know, uh, before we move on to the next one, I, I want to yeah. give a shout out to uh, Art Project. Yes. Um, which yeah, which I yeah. think is fantastic. I mean, it's such a breadth of stuff they have. Um, you know, that's a great co-op game. You've got the Marvel Dice Throne stuff. If you yeah. want head-to-head yeah. -head dually mm -hmm. stuff, I mean, yeah. you know, you, know, you uh, the op is really, I would say, ascendant in a big way over the last year. Uh, and yeah. coincidence that that's when we started, <laughs> right? Yeah, I can't say. Yeah. yeah. I, I I agree. <laughs> um, fun fact: uh, Telestrations is by far the uh, most gifted game that I've purchased over the last uh, since I got in the hobby. I I've, love to hear yeah, that. Yeah, I've given it to so many people, especially at, right after we play it, like at a family gathering mm -hmm. or just you know casual friends' night. It's like this is the funnest game ever, right? I mean, it's yeah, it's yeah, it's, it's amazing, and people love playing it. So I've gifted many copies over the year. So um, yeah, great choice, Aww, right? That's awesome. Biased or not, I think it's a great choice. <laughs> 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 okay, uh, let's move on to our collective number 18. That's going to be falling to me. Um, 
Uh, this is uh, this company has a little bit of a near and dear to my heart because it was the first Kickstarter I ever backed when I got into the hobby Ooh. back in 2016. Uh, is it 2016? Yeah, 2016. Uh, there was a game called Santorini that I backed. and Oh, yeah. a little old game called Santorini. A little old game <laughs> called Santorini. But the game that I chose from Roxley Games is actually Brass Birmingham. Uh, this is just a beautiful production. Uh, this game hurts my head, folks. It is a brain burner. Um, it's, I feel like it. Well, at how slick this design hey, is. Hey, Ruel. Yeah. You're back. You gotta start over. Do I gotta start over? Yeah, you yeah. went dead, buddy. You just dropped out for a couple seconds, but you're back now. All right, hey, this is fun. You. Okay, I think it's every time yeah. you switch to the screen with just you for whatever reason. It, just it me. Pauses. Okay, <laughs> so I'm gonna let me mark this. Um, I have Twitch markers here that I can mark. So oh, okay. that's handy. Yeah, cool, cool. That's very nice. Add the stream marker there so I can clip that out. <laughs> uh, let me check the scene. In fact, so here's my scene. Um, and you'll just start over. I mean, you literally only got like two words into yeah, it. Yeah, you said, when okay. I play brass. You, stopped, I, you got I the very awesome snazzy you. line, yeah. I, when I don't play brass, but when I do, oh, I okay, play brass cool. or something more clever than that. Okay, yeah, <laughs> and I was yep. about to bully you, but um, that <laughs> out. So, okay. it was really upsetting for me. Okay. Um. <clears throat> Yikes. Okay, now I see. Okay. You've got this. All right. So when I play a brass, I always have a fantastic time with my friends. Um, it's such a, cr uh, just an amazing, uh, pick up a delivery game. And also it's crunchy as heck. It's a Martin Walsh design that I feel like it's his best. And I always, I don't know, anytime my, uh, my group of friends and I get together, we always just marvel, um, after the game's like, wow, that was good. That was so good. And, oh, and I always forget, does beer teleport or is it ale? No, I don't know <laughs> if it teleports or I need a connection like I do with Cole. Um, but the artwork is beautiful and it just, it's a, it's, it's a card based game, right? I mean, it's a card driven game, but there's so many uh, different moving parts and trying to make sure that you can uh, connect uh, your goods and sell the goods at, at the best price. And oh man, I, I love this game and I love the production of it. Um, that's when I, you know, I backed Santorini first of all. And then when I got to Brass Burn, I was like, oh my gosh, this is like world's worlds ahead of it i mean just amazing and then i got the iron clay chips too i mean come on i i use those iron clay uh the iron clays for everything now anything that has yeah to they're do gorgeous with uh chips yeah um and any train game of course i'm going to use those but i had to put this on the list um roxley i mean they also do um a amazing two-player game called radlands uh that mm -hmm. is a great game and as mm -hmm. i talk about santorini is fantastic but yeah roxley the quality quality company and i think brass is their best game yeah yeah mm -hmm. yeah i think for for me rocks roxley was on my short list as well roxley is is sort of synonymous with with quality right like i mm -hmm. i kind of i expect to I expected I'm never disappointed by the quality of the game that I get from them. Uh, and so I was I was I was juggling between Brass and Santorini for for them as well. Yeah. I know a lot of people love Radlands. I I have Radlands now because I was I grabbed it. I just I grabbed it from WSPG. There was okay. a, yeah, there yeah. Was a tournament going on. I was like, well, well, just just to have, you know, just in case. I yeah. do, I think I do like it. Even in the, even a genre that I like a head to head battler, I I'm not a huge fan of. And then the more I play, I still like it. I think Roxley is just like Every time they put something out, I'm it's it's a company that I want to take note of. Absolutely. Yeah. I think that's a reasonable call. Except you're both wrong because <laughs> one, Brass Lancashire is the superior title ah, uh, okay. over Birmingham. Hey, sorry, that's very Shots wrong. And two, very neither wrong. of them are correct because the true greatest rocks of the game of all time is Super Motherload. Which I'm sure nobody oh, remembers, unfortunately. Yeah. Never but what a that. great little deck builder that is sadly forgotten, but should be remembered. It was a phenomenal game yeah. back wow. in the day. I forgot that they published that, Richard, to be honest with you. I, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah wow. Okay. Dig Dug the board game, basically, and it's yeah. great. Mm -hmm. Nice. Dig Dug yeah. the board Dig game. Dig Dug. All oh, right. that sounds awesome. Cool. Okay, Richard, you're up next, my friend. Am I? Okay. You are. <laughs> um, right. Let's see. What are we? 20, 19, 18. 17. So I'm number 17. 
Number 17 on our combined list, everybody. This is weird for me not to be pre-recording it. I feel a lot more pressure than I do normally. Uh, yeah, I feel welcome like I'm to our world. Under. Um, yeah, oh, yeah, now I know. We, now exactly. We, now we can boo you in person. Yeah. <laughs> I am prepared. I am prepared. Um, one thing I did want to add, because I didn't say right up front, in making this list, one thing I didn't want to do was pick... I mean, I'd have a completely different list if I was picking some of my favorite publishers that are kind of like um, one or two or three man and woman shops, you know, mm. um, where it's more about just that designer or mm. just that series. So I was definitely trying to pick publishers that have a breadth and, um, you know, a, a ton of stuff from a lot of different places, do a lot of development. So that was important to me. I'll talk more about, you know, some of my real personal all-time faves when we get to the um, stuff at the end. But for now, our number combined 17 is WizKids, which I think might be surprised for a lot of folks. WizKids, of course, has been around forever. Um, you know, for many, many years, they were all about, oh, what was it, Nage Knight and Hero Clicks? Um, you know, Quarriers. Anybody remember Quarriers? Yep. That was big back in the day. But what happened is, I forget exactly when, it was like uh, seven or eight years ago, um, Zev Schlesinger, Z Man, the, the founder of Z Man Games, uh, he got bought out and uh, ended up, you know, getting his golden parachute and then leaving. And he came on to WizKids and transformed the place. I, I, I don't know. I'm sure there were a lot of other people instrumental um, to this, but, you know, in the um, just slightly more than half a decade since, WizKids has just knocked out banger after banger for me. I've got some of my favorite. I mean, like, there's free radicals right there. Oh, yeah. I absolutely love it to pieces. Um, and just, oh, you know, what was it? Um, they, they've had several top tens of the year for me ever since Zev came on. And I was worried. Zev has now moved on to greener pastures, um, you know, working with, with another startup. I know uh, somebody uh, has uh, some uh, inside knowledge there. And I was worried. I was kind of worried that, oh, maybe that's going to signal a change. Maybe it was all the Z-Man. But no, they have continued to put out fantastic games, including uh, their best game of all time is uh, Star Trek's Ooh. Captain's Chair. Uh, uh, right. Which, um, I am, I wish we were f streaming tomorrow because my personal copy will be here tomorrow. <laughs> nice. I am literally, I have another tab with my FedEx tracking number. I am waiting, <laughs> but in the meantime, I have played this in digital form. I actually, uh, spent some time with Dave Turchi, one of the co-designers, and he walked me through their digital, um, or, uh, you know, testing app they've had. And as a longtime fan of Star Trek, of all things Star Trek, and a, a, a big fan of the Imperial Imperium card system, uh, or Imperial, you know, Imperial Horizons, Imperial Legends. Uh, this is two different things combined to make what I would have to say is the greatest Star Trek board and card game of all time. Uh, you know, eclipsing everything else. It is rich and deep and crunchy, maybe a little bit too deep and crunchy. It might have been better to be uh, a little bit more broad. I mean, this is, um, well, hey, it's from WizKids. I mean, this, I think, is going to go right up there toe-to-toe -to -toe with uh, their Mage Knight board game, you know, from cool. Vlada Shavadl, uh, which is, I mean, and this game is as big and rich and crunchy as that, and it is a love letter to Trek. I mean, there is so much in there. Dave Turchy is the biggest, the second biggest Trek fan in all of board game, after myself, <laughs> and um, I actually spent quite a bit time talking to him about it when it was uh, still in development. I believe um, Porthos is going to be in the game because of me, um, uh, because I, nice. I lobbied for that so hard. And, you know, again, uh, you know, th this is just one of many games. And I mean, but game after game, even though they, you know, WizKids for a long time was kind of pigeonholed as a certain type of thing, but they completely reinvented. I mean, I guess I'm kind of reminded of the op. The op is, you know, from a previous one, is in that same stage where they are broadening out, and I don't think there's any looking back. Uh, and I, every time uh, there's a new WizKids game that might show up at my door, I get very, very excited, which is why it's number 17 on our list. Yeah. yeah. The nice. <clears throat> This looks fantastic. I can't wait to actually see it, uh, Rich. I remember uh, Gen Con this year, I ran into David Turchi, and I remember I sent you the picture of uh, me and Yes, him, and yes. I totally faked you out. Like, you're, oh my gosh, you got the coffee. I was like, no, he, he just wanted to send a picture of himself with the game. So, yep, 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 yep. a little teaser. But yeah, this looks fantastic. I, I can't wait to check it out. 
Yeah, it's really exciting that this is uh, this is your number number one for for WizKids, and to see that they they continue to kind of push forward, right? I feel like Mage Knight is is the well known one that mm-hmm. that people would sort of gravitate to. So it's exciting to to see a new up and coming on the list, and I know a lot of people are excited for this one as well. I think there's yeah. a lot of buzz around this, so yeah. it's it'll be cool when it hits the shelves and people's sweaty palms. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would literally if it wasn't going to get here till Wednesday of next week, I would delay my half year long trip to make sure that wow. i was taking it with me on the road <laughs> that's pretty oh, yeah. cool that how do is you awesome. get games when you're on the road are you just like well i'm i'm set for the year or do you get them delivered at like drop points uh we've got a drop point system we've also got my cool. sister-in-law who will forward them on to me depending on which publisher it is some yeah. of them will work with me and say okay well we're gonna be in topeka in about a week and here's a mailbox etc uh if you go ahead and send it to me that'll cost me 10 bucks for them to hold it that's what we generally tend that's to do that's wild oh that's my goodness crazy. Yeah. love it crazy okay great shout well, out to P- topeka yeah viewers yay topeka <laughs> um, let's go topeka this one's for topeka all right <laughs> episode 100 <laughs> uh speaking of topeka what do we got for P- topeka and the rest of the folks there chris at number 16 well, to take a little peek at our number 16 here. <laughs> Get him out of here. Get him out of here. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, well, uh, this is this is a, 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 a crew that almost made the top designers list, but they're kind of like an ensemble of designers. And so I, I, I'm excited to put them into the publishers list. This is a design crew where all of their games, I've played almost every single one of their games, and mm-hmm. and. I find that their games exist incredibly well with a, what I like to refer to as above the table interaction, providing a framework mm. for that interaction and that interactive gameplay. And so it may hit with groups or it may not, but it certainly hits with my groups. This is Ivy Studios, uh, and I'm picking Veiled okay. Fate nice. as my choice for Ivy Studios. So from Ivy Studios, they they are known for Veiled Fate. They've done Moonrakers. They've done Mythic Mischief. They've done Fractured Sky. They now have done Moon Rollers. Uh, and they have Tend, I think, coming out soon. That's their first sort of flip and write. And then they've had some expansions for those those games as well. But I think I got the entire breadth of their catalog. Oh, there's Tend. Uh, Richard is showing it on uh, on the screen if you want to switch back to a, to a, a, a scene with all four of us. Yes. Nice. Tend. Yeah, I, I was yeah, supposed to get a copy of Tend to to, to do some coverage on, uh, <laughs> nope. but but it got lost in the mail, which uh, which sucks. But are I'll you serious? To, yeah, yeah, it was supposed to oh, come no, out really? oh. and, and I and I reached out to Austin. I was like, hey, just like letting you know, I'm sure it probably just slipped through the cracks. Like I didn't get sent a copy. No worries. Like I'll still be excited to look into it. He's like, oh no, there should have been one sent to you, but it was just a it, a mail issue happened. It's probably that's in what Topeka. happens. It's probably in Topeka. Yeah. I think that was it. <laughs> yeah, I do know a guy. <laughs> yeah. I do know a guy. Um, we can talk about that uh, off, st- right. off stream. But um, but yeah, I, I really like, I really love Ivy Studios games in terms of the framework of the game that they produce. Like Veiled Fate is yeah. so incredibly mm-hmm. simple. And I, I also find that most of Ivy Studios games are probably overpriced for what they are. But that doesn't <laughs> matter to me because the gameplay experience is so good for me and my group. And I think if you have like, if you have a group that really like to just talk at each other for a long time, um, Ivy Studios <laughs> games are really good for that, for that framework. And I, there's something about their games that, I understand the following that they have uh, developed. I think Ivy Studios fans are some of like the most passionate and like loyal fans in that I've seen in the board game industry. And and I think it is their sort of design philosophy. And if you 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 get a group that it, they just sit well with, they sit really well. I love Veiled Fate. We played it the other day. Introduced it to some new new players. They they all loved it as well. It's so simple in concept, uh, and then just yeah it just comes out really well i i love i have loved every game of theirs that i've played the only game i haven't played is mythic mischief uh and tend now that that's uh coming out but i know i would like mythic mischief because i know it it very feels very santorini and i just like cannot wait to try it i know mythic mischief i will enjoy um (laughs) even then it's probably the least above the table interaction is most puzzly but i know i'll still enjoy it and like it oh but it's Uh, still very interactive too it is there's that's good yeah for those two players, I mean, you cool. are lockstep. Every step they take is one that you then have to make. Nice. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, no, but I, I just think I, I think they make great quality games. And if if somebody who's very cheap, cheapy old me, who can sort of justify purchasing uh, their kind of luxury product, I think that that speaks to how great the gameplay actually is. And they're just, yeah, they. I, I love I love all their games. I think they're all really fun. Yeah. Um, so they had to be on the list. Their whole catalog is great. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I, I agree 100%, Chris. I just got to play 10. It's fantastic. It's easily one of my top five rolling rights of all time. Um, it's just brilliant. And uh, Veiled Fate. Oh, look, Rish has got a copy. <laughs> um, Chris, a Veiled Fate, I totally agree with you. It's that, it's that really, I'm not even that big of a social deduction fan, but this does it in a way that I appreciate. It's social deduction within the context of a strategy board game, right? There's strategy involved, and yeah, you are trying to, do, to deduce who's who, but especially with the expansion, oh man, it takes it to the next level. It's like, it's a fantastic I game. Really want to try the uh, Veiled Fate. Yeah. yeah. So, so yeah. good. Um, no, yeah. this is. It's, it's great, great little tweaks. Mm-hmm. Also, just like from the yeah. publisher perspective, I, I wanted to put Ivy Studios on my list so bad, but I haven't quite played enough of their games. But from my perspective, from like a marketing and publisher perspective, Ivy Studios is such a fascinating case study because they decided the lane they wanted to be in mm-hmm. and they refused to budge out of it regardless of yep. any like shifting market trends. Like, yes, their games probably are overpriced. They're very interactive. Social deduction is a very divisive mechanic that they often use like that yeah. above the table yeah. interaction you know encompassing that within social deduction things that involve talking above the table is not something that every gaming group likes yeah. and i love that they stuck to their guns and they have developed a very loyal following like an ivy mm-hmm. studio games will always feel like an ivy studios game and that's because they stuck to it and i think it's really interesting like the fact that they are able to make wildly <laughs> wildly yeah. deluxified expensive versions of relatively yeah. simple games and not in the negative way, but like get away with it, I think is fascinating. Like they have found their audience of people who like that experience. Yeah. And I think it's I think it's so cool. There's not a lot of publishers that you can say that yeah. about. That yeah. they pick their lane and they just haven't budged. Brink. I, lo- I love I that you said Brink. I haven't played Brink either. Uh, yeah. <coughs> mm. Oh, that one I haven't played. Yeah. Ray, I love that you brought that up yep. because uh, I do find that, yeah, it is like overproduced, but it's because their fan base is so loyal. It's like, yeah, gimme, yeah. gimme, gimme. I'm it like, works. I'm all down with it. And like, Tend it's is a cool. perfect People example. like deluxification. <laughs> like, do. I get it. Like People tend love blinged out metal pieces. It's, it's yeah. so cool, right? They, they made a wooden board for Veiled Fate. <laughs> right. People wanted the wooden <laughs> board for Veiled Fate. I bought the retail version of Veiled Fate, and none of my friends believed me that that's not. Not the highest <laughs> level that you can get. Oh no, like, it's the worst one, probably. Yeah, but it's still, like, and it's, it's still, still up like there in terms of five dollars or something. Like it's crazy, but like, it's actually like so cool. It's a very interesting case study. Yeah, and I, I love yeah. like intend. So you have this rolling right real quick. Um, so you have the different colors and stuff with pens. They not only just give you pens, and Richard will attest to this. They give you like little rubber stamps. Like they, you can stamp the yeah. things onto the piece oh, of paper. Oh, that's cool. It's so cool. I have never seen pens like these they are yeah. so freaking cool it's amazing. and apparently every player gets their own set yeah. of these amazing pens. you ever played a roll and write where you've got a oh i've got to write in the little squiggle that represents a fish yep. or whatever and yeah. oh i feel really something no they just give you you can stamp them you can, just you can stamp, stamp them it. it's, it's the other side of your pen yeah i, I mean so they, they deluxified that's, roll that's and write pens. <laughs> that is, i will say that's that a deluxification so that's smart. functionally yeah. Yeah. very helpful because yeah. that is a oh gosh yeah a, yeah. Weird yeah. barrier with roll and rights is like, you know, you think about cartographers, you look at some people's yeah. sheets and you're like, what on earth am I looking at? Like, I yeah. can't, mm-hmm. I can't parse this. Yeah. <laughs> so um, that's really cool. Yeah. That's great call, Chris. Yeah. Ivy Studios. Yeah. Love Ivy Studios. They're great. Likewise. Yeah. Cool. Good pick. Okay. Uh, moving right along. Uh, that was number right. 16. And we're going to go to Ray for our number 15 on the list. Yeah. So speaking about uh, games that do good and interesting social interaction, Uh, This is a publisher that has been on several of my lists. This is Floodgate Games. Um, I find they not only... uh, One of the things... You'll notice a theme with some of my picks. I love the visual cohesion with a lot of Floodgate games. They Mm. pick art styles and color palettes that are very unique and not very common and that stand out. That's something I I love when a game is pretty to look at. I think Fog of Love with that all white, pink and purple, really unique decorum with those bright pops of color. Gorgeous, beautiful. And then beyond the superficial level, I love so many of their games. I think they take an interesting approach to social gameplay that has enough crunch for gamers, but that still functions quite well as entry level games. I did end up picking Decorum as my favorite, but I'm also Mm. a huge fan of Fog of Love, 
Kites, Sagrada. Mm-hmm. They do a ton of games that I think Sagrada st- artisans right? oh, man. Yeah. strike so an good. amazing balance of of diff- like interesting things mechanically that aren't too overwhelming. I think save for Fog of Love, I think Fog of Love is like a little a little convoluted for what it is, but most of their games in general strike a really great balance of having an interesting mechanic like decorum, but that is delivered in a really accessible package. And yeah, I just I, I just think they put out a lot of bangers. I really love Floodgate games, decorum. I've I've yapped about endlessly so i'll (laughs) spare you all the details but basically it's one of the few cooperative games i actually like it is a um, Mm. deduction puzzle where you're all trying to figure out what combination of things you can put in the house that everyone is happy with and everyone has their own unique conditions for what they want in the house but you cannot directly communicate that to anyone um, and it's such a unique experience. I mean, similarly with Fog of Love, the the over the table interaction that you can have with Fog of Love, I think is really fun and really interesting. And so, Floodgate Games is our number fifteen. That's a good call. Great pick. Well, I can't recall you talking <laughs> about didn't, that you really like kites as well. I really like kites as well. I, I know. It's, yeah. Do you hate it? I feel like you hate it. Oh, I think it's great. Although okay. I like uh, their follow up, the fireworks one, even better. Yes, I haven't tried that one, but kites is great, and that's actually reminds me of something I wanted to say about the production quality. I feel like Floodgate mm-hmm. takes on risks that other publishers wouldn't, like with Sagrada and all the dice, Kites and all the, oh I gosh. know from yeah. a, from experience, what a nightmare Sandheimers are to produce right. and what mm-hmm. a quality control mm-hmm. nightmare they are. And I actually really commend Floodgate for taking on games that have lots of bits that are kind of make a publisher's life difficult and executing <laughs> on them really well. <laughs> nice. Cool. Yeah. Terrific choice, Ray. Re- really great choice for number 15, Floodgate Games and Decorum. Uh, moving right along, let's go to our number 14, which is going to be back to me. And I this uh, this publisher, it's a small um, one-man operation. It is Fower Games, um, the publisher of one of my all-time favorite games, Paperback. Um, I had to put oh this on gosh. here. Yeah, I absolutely wow. love Paperback. Y'all know how much I love this game. I love word games. Uh, mm-hmm. Paperback is basically um, Dominion meets Scrabble. I've talked about it before. Um, this one, the version I'm showing right now is the 10th anniversary edition. And the reason why I showed it is because the solo edition, the solo variant in this game is so good. Uh, they replaced the original solo variant, which was terrific, but this one's even better oh, because good, you yeah. have like an AI that you're um, um, competing against and they have different versions of the game they have paperback the the paperback adventures they have a little mini expansion that you can add on and then of course the 10th anniversary and the one i know and everyone's hardback gonna, the everyone's gonna be talking about is paperback adventures which i absolutely mm-hmm. love i love paperback adventures but that's a solo game i mean i know it could be cooperative as well but I chose Paperback because this is the one, if I go to a game night, this is the one I'm going to bring. And with my fellow word nerds, we're going to play uh, Paperback uh, versus like <laughs> Adventures, nerds. which is just a one or you know two-player game. Hardback is great, too. I play Hardback all the time, actually, on um, BGA. Uh, you, could play paper, um, wow. you could play it for free on BGA Hardback. And I don't know what it is about Hardback. I love Hardback, but I would say that's more of a deck builder with a word game in it whereas paperback is more of a pure word game with some deck building to it and i think that's why i prefer right, paperback. I that. yeah but power games they also do burgle bros um and also now oh yeah that's a hugely yeah. popular series. yeah these yeah. are really popular uh, a cooperative game too right richard uh, do you are you a fan of burgle mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I thought it was very clever. Yeah, although um, I, I mean they've done a lot of really great stuff. I mean that that run that head to head. Oh, and my god, I love the fugitive. Fugitive, uh, yeah, or just fugitive yep. was so much game in just a deck of cards. That was right? absolutely fantastic. Fugitive yeah, yeah, great. run would have been my pick. I really run. love run. So I think good. that's such yep. a great head to head deduction. Yep. Yep. And they did another one. I'm trying to remember. There was another word game that I really liked um, by Fowler. It, it had some area control to it, which was the weirdest thing. Ever. Oh, word domination. Word domination. Right? right? Oh. Yeah. Yeah. It was so crazy. It was like a word game, but there was area control. I'm like, what the heck? And it worked so well. I, I really enjoyed that. So, of course, for you know my fellow, again, my fellow word nerds, I love Fowler Games. And that's why it made our collective number 14, Fowler Games Paperback. That's a good choice. Honestly, I mean, I have to admit, as soon as you said it, I thought, oh, paperback. So you're really you're just saying you really love paperback. But no, you're right. There's a yeah, lot right. of variety yeah. um, from Tim and, and co. Yeah. I mean, going all the way back to Walkstar, if anybody remembers that. Yeah. One of the first right. real-time, real-time modern game. co-op yep. Euro games. Yep, I remember yeah, that one. That are much hotter these days, and they were way ahead of the curve. They were. Oh, good cool. choice. Yep. Never even heard of that one. 
Yeah, I also, I also love how it's they were ahead of the curve, but it's just he was ahead of the he, curve. Yeah, yeah. You're right. <laughs> it's just yeah. one guy. One that guy. makes it even cooler. There's no <laughs> they. It's just, yeah. it's it, just it's him. It's just him, yeah. 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 I've said it before and I'll say it again. The industry needs more video game people. Tim Fowers, like me, is from the video game industry. And, yeah. and you know, yeah. as is um, you know, some of my most you know, I mean Eric Lang is from, from the video game Shabbat, industry. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think there's something about you know going through that crucible um that I know very well. <laughs> um brings when you bring um that creativity over into the board game space, you just rethink how things work because of that different worldview you have. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I mean Tim is is fantastic. And, and just the greatest guy too yeah yeah cool yeah i love cool. i love nice him guy. and his kilt and his bagpipes his kilt at the end of bag- gen con. Yeah. that is like my favorite thing if you've never been to gen con tim fowers um i don't know if he did it this year but historically uh, the the last like 30 minutes of gen con on sunday before the hall closes he he wears his little scottish kilt and he will do like a little lap around uh his booth with his real bagpipes it's yeah. it's the coolest thing yeah it's so neat Cool. So shout out to Tim and number 14, Fire Games Paperback. Uh, moving right along to our number 13 is back to Richard. It's me. Yes, I'm going to tell everybody our number 13 combined. It is a newer publisher who I have really fallen hard in love with over the last couple of years. Uh, they go by the name Bad Comet. Uh, they are a South Korean uh, publisher, developer house, and their best game by far, uh, thus far, I should say, is Life of Amazonia, which is absolutely phenomenal. Um, as far as I'm concerned, this is a Seven Wonders killer when it boils right down to it, mm-hmm. uh, because that's hard. You know, it's a uh, although it's 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 not card drafting. It's it's uh, what do you call it? The other word. You don't d- do a deck. It's a bag. bag, bag it's a bag builder, yes. So uh, forget uh, some wonders. It's an Orleans killer as far as I'm concerned mm. because it does so much so well. And uh, like some of the other ones we talked about, like Ivy Studios, they are fast getting known for amazing production quality as mm-hmm. well. Way, way, way over delivering. But that's not what puts them on the list for me. It is the incredible gameplay of Life of Amazonia, which made my top 10 two years ago. And uh, then just this year coming out, they've got Wondrous Creatures, which is an Everdale killer, as far as I'm concerned. Um, you know, it's very, very difficult for me to go back and even consider playing. And there's nothing wrong with Everdale. Everdale's awesome, but um, you know, they, you know, they do so much more. And again, such a beautiful thing coming up with cool, fresh, uh, new ideas. And then the thing that uh, cemented it for me, because I was still working on this list yesterday, is um, Shallow Sea. Uh, this is uh, the game that is coming from them next, and this basically says, "Hey, uh, Cascadia, hold my beer." Uh, let us show you how it's really done. <laughs> and uh, my run through for this will be coming soon. But it's, uh, you know, it's a beautiful, gorgeous game. It's, uh, you know, fast playing. It's, you know, like the, the best of the kind of stuff you would see from the, the Calico and the Cascadia line of games. But um, all of their games have been beautiful, but they have taken the core ideas of what you've seen from earlier games and tweaked them and twisted them and presented them with a new new uh, philosophy, I'm going to say. Uh, and it's really something kind of unique. If there's one through line of the games of theirs i played, they've done a couple more that were earlier that were kind of take that in your face games that I haven't played. But of the games of theirs that I have played, they give you so much more freedom. Uh, in a time when board games are often about creating tension by scrunching you into a tiny little box and saying, okay, make your choice. And, oh, you made a bad one? You're stuck for the rest of the game with that. Their games really go out of their way to give you the tools to, um, what did I say when I was filming this? Um, agency. You have so much more agency, so much more control. And I think that's something we don't see too terribly often in a lot of other uh, games these days where it's almost a designer trick to say, oh, I'll just turn the screws. I'll just say, oh, you can't do that. You can't do that. You can't do that. Figure it out, player. And don't get me wrong. I love that. That creates a lot of fun and angst and tension. But I love that they are saying, no, 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 that could be a different way. And it's not like their games then suddenly become chillaxed and laid back and just kind of, oh, I'm hardly paying attention. You, they're still full of really tough choices, but they never overwhelm you with too many options. It's a real delicate uh, balancing act, tightrope that they're on. And they just, three times in a row now, they have knocked it out of the park for me. And so when I was thinking about this list, I just had to think about, well, if you're telling me about a game 
uh, and you tell me who the publisher is, how do I rank it on excitement level? At this point, Bad Comet is near at the top of my list. I have just been so impressed by them, and I can't wait to see what they come up with next. Number 13 on the list, Bad Comet. Wow. Yeah, great pick. I remember their first game on Kickstarter, Shaolio, like Warring States, I think that was right. it. Um, yeah. I, I just remember seeing like the production, again, the production value on that and and sort of what they were trying to do and push forward and accomplish. And ever since then, like that was the first one, like I was, I almost backed, I didn't have any money, so I didn't. <laughs> uh, but it, it was like one of those things, every time a bad comic game comes around, because they do a lot of stuff like through Kickstarter, I, mm-hmm. I take note, I sit up, I, and even I'll be scrolling through, I'll be like, man, this looks really good. And then I'll check, and it's bad comment. I'm like, ah, oh, I should have known. Like, I think yep. this, is a, this is a really great pick uh, because of that. Like, they're, they're, they're people who have, like, emerged and established themselves, and it's very exciting to see. Yeah. I haven't had a chance yet to play Life of Amazonia, but that sounds like my jam for sure. I just did. Oh, it, you will love mm-hmm. it. Was there a, a did it get hit retail, Richard? Was this strictly a, a yes? I believe. Uh, well, yeah, it was a Kickstarter, and then there was the deluxe version. But no, I, I believe it is available at retail now, okay. and it's worth seeking out. Okay. I mean, I, I could do another ten minutes talking about. I I feel so stupid. Shay covered it for the channel, yeah, because uh, I thought, oh, it's a bag builder. Yeah. Oh, you're fine. And um, and then Shay raved about it, and I eventually saw it. And like, oh my god, why did I say no to that? And it took <laughs> me over a year to get it. Um, and then when I did, I just fell so hard in love with it. And yes. uh, and then wondrous creatures, even more so. Although, oh, it's tough. I mean, they're, they're they're both so neck and neck. But I only just got my final copy of Wondrous Creatures the other day, so it might ultimately eclipse Amazonia. But I've only played it in prototype form so far. And then I gotta say, watch for this coming soon. Um, it's. Uh, yeah, it, it, it's it's every publisher's got to have their Azul, right? That's what this oh, is. This is okay. their Azul, basically. The, okay. And um, and I I think it it stands very nicely in that pantheon of style of game. Very nice. Looking cool. forward to that. Cool. Okay, so that was thirteen. Uh, we're going on to number twelve, and we are back to Chris. All right. Uh, so I spend a lot of time on crowdfunding games and Kickstarter and GameFound and all that sort of stuff. Yes, and so. You do. Uh, so I spend How much time do you spend every week <laughs> it's, to do uh, that Monday like, show you do? Yeah, it's too like much a, time, yeah. Richard. Too much time. <laughs> That's the answer. Reading through all the rule books takes a long time to try to like absorb uh, and, and be knowledgeable. But there's there's one company that that also has a sister company, um, and the sister company does better than this company. I think like it's sort of more well known. Mm-hmm. But I I like this ver- this side of them. Uh, and I find you can apply this to both um, KTBG or Burnt Island. Burnt Island is my pick. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, okay, for, yes. yeah. for this. Uh, so KTBG and Burnt Island, they are they are run by the same people, but they are differently. They're they're branded differently. KTBG are more sort of accessible accessible games, and uh, right over there, I'm looking at a copy of Layers, which will be out on oh, yeah. Kickstarter soon, which is really <laughs> good. Uh, and and but I want to talk about the Burned Island side of things, and I'm choosing Endeavor Deep Sea um, for the for the uh, that that side of things. Uh, specifically, mm. like well, I, I probably told you Endeavor, and you probably have a have a a, 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 a gameplay up of Endeavor. But oh, I, I want yeah. to highlight about Endeavor Deep Sea specifically. Deep sea. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, and the, the the thing about Burned Island games is that I have found often on Kickstarter you get the really good deluxe version, and then you get the you know retail version where they cut corners about everything and they have to in order to create the different like price disparity for burn island is one of the only companies that i know of consistently where i think both versions the retail and the deluxe are great purchases like and Mm -hmm. give you give you so much in both and that is what really sort of made them stand out to me uh, because I'm always somebody who wants the retail version, right? I don't need the deluxe version, but I still right. want a nice like game. I still want I still want fun little pieces to play with. I'm just cheap and poor. Uh, <laughs> and so I find with Burnt Island, like you look at something like Hall of the Mountain King and the upgrades that they do on the little individual pieces in the deluxe version and, and whatever they, they add to it, it adds so much. And then you look at the retail version and I always find it affordable. Uh, I always find it like still very well produced and still has like that really tactile feeling. And so I think, and I chose the Burnt Island side. I think they do this for KDBG as well, but I chose the Burnt Island side because Burnt Island is their more complex line. Essentially, yeah. so the, so they'll put the more complex games on the Burnt Island side, and then the easier, more accessible games uh, on the KDBG side, which makes them more widely uh, uh, 
have more mass appeal, right? Uh, but I just like I I really really loved uh, Endeavor Deep Sea when uh, when I tried it out back when the Kickstarter was. I've talked about it a lot on this show because it, it's gotten me actively excited. It's one of those things where like I've been excited about it. Uh, and Richard's gone off to get his copy yeah. for sure. Of course. Um, <laughs> 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 you know he's gonna, no, um, no, 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 no. <laughs> I heard a sound in the other room. Oh. It's my, it's my automatic vacuum. I just cleaner, expect just you. I expect you to over. come out any any game I talk about. I want you to bring it in on frame, Richard. That's what I want. Um, yeah, I just think I think they're like a phenomenal company, and and I think Burnt Island especially is just like. I, it's a, it's again. I take note of their games. Uh, so seeing Endeavor Deep Sea and, and putting that on the list, um, it, yeah, it's it's uh, and having that just now delivered, it's a great it's a great game. Uh, and and I I'm looking forward to seeing what's coming next from from them and their line yeah. for sure. Yeah. I'm very jealous of you that you've gotten to play that because you're right. I haven't. Mm-hmm. Um, supposedly there is a copy that is going to one of those drop boxes on Topeka. our route. We'll be Topeka. picking up. Uh, no, no, Loma Mar, California, more specifically. Uh, oh. And um, so I'm looking forward to that because I'm a fan of the old Endeavor, and this new one seems to be such a huge improvement. Not just a retheme, but just like you know rethinking so much of the core gameplay. Although I gotta say, Chris. What about your neighbor, not your friend? Yeah, my neighbor and not <laughs> my friend. Famously not Duval, your friend. <laughs> famously not my friend, specifically, on the record. Uh, I, I didn't want to include How to Save a World because uh, it's not out yet, right? Like the Kickstarter has happened, right. it hasn't, but it hasn't landed. And so that felt like a bit of a cheat. Uh, it, it would vie for for top spot for Burnt Island for sure. I really love love the game. Like I play tested it. I got to give my feedback on it. To to you got to give your feedback on it. And your two player mm-hmm. um, rules are great. Like they yeah. add that tension. I nice. I tested those rules out with my neighbor and not friend you all. Uh, and I was <laughs> like, yes, this is an obvious thing that should be here. Oh, fantastic! Like really great, great. Like creates that tension. Um, yeah, I really I really uh, really enjoy that game. Really excited to to get my copy. Uh, but uh, but because it but isn't for now yet for now it's for now it's Endeavor Deep Sea yeah yeah yes great call you know I I have not played any of the uh, the uh, games on that um, for Burnt Island I've only played the KTBG stuff so mm-hmm. I need which to by the way for folks who don't know since yeah. we're all hipsters and you know uh, all that is kids <laughs> yeah. table board games right uh, is KTBG right. Yep. but yep. do not be fooled by that title you would think oh you know yeah. they're just for yeah. kids but they're not no. they're, exactly. they're, their range of family weight games are phenomenal too exactly yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. layers point. layers is good I, okay. Uh, layers yeah. is good. I always like yeah. the what was the one? The is it the Raiders Deep Sea Raiders or something like that? Um, the scuba you, game, the uh, scuba diving game. Yeah, the, the diving game. I thought that was like Rec Raiders. Rec Raiders. Thank you. I always is called that excellent. one a very yeah, a very light, almost like Feld like game. It's a point salad type mm-hmm. thing, but oh, mm-hmm. that, that game was fantastic. Yeah, Creature but, Comforts, Creature Maple Comforts, Valley, yeah. as well. It's usually Those really, highlights. It's kind of like the theme. Like they have more uh, yeah. approachable, accessible themes, right. but they can they. One of the things they do really well over at KTBG is making games that are accessible for kids, but also interesting for adults. They do it better than most companies who claim to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Agreed. Cool. Okay. Uh, Ray, let's go with number 11, please. All right. So number 11 is Scorpion Mask or Mask K. I'm not sure. Uh I don't speak. Hey, we have a French speaker. Yeah. Well, is there an accent on it? Yes. Um, there is. Then it'd be, then it'd be there Scorpio is? Masque, then yeah. Masque, okay. All right. Okay. See, the thing is, that's what I thought, but I, my, 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 the dumb American in me is too afraid to like <laughs> take the risk and be like, be wrong. <laughs> so Scorpion Masque is our number 11. My favorite game from them is Decrypto. I am... Um, hmm love party games that's something i feel like Mm -hmm. i talk about a lot on this channel i love party games i find that too often party games get slated into really simple rules like just kind of can they can be kind of uninteresting i we can always make them fun but something i love about what scorpion puts out is that they add crunch and a little bit of weirdness to their party games i think decrypto is a great example of this i find that the people who don't like decrypto find it don't like it because they find it to be a party game that's too crunchy. I love that. This game is a nightmare to teach, but I absolutely adore it. It's one of my favorite party games of all time. They also, of course, uh, make Sky Team, which I didn't put on this list just because I'm not I that was, big of a co-op yeah. person. I know, okay, I know. Okay. My favorite is Decrypto. <laughs> Sky Team is a very valid answer. Obviously, very in the 
um, in the popular culture right now. They also did Turing Machine, which I think is yep. really interesting. It's again, crunchy, that but it, it goes quickly. Mm -hmm. I slate that in my brain as like a crunchy party game. Stay Cool is a nightmare oh, and yeah. I love it. It's insane. Yes. Like they just make <sighs> weird party games um, that, that, do, that aren't afraid to be kind of weird and potentially overwhelming like stay cool is if you've never played it stay cool is a is a name a thing fast game however you have the person on the right asking you to spell out the answer to the question with blocks you have the person on the left asking you to speak the answer and then there's like an extra layer where you have to time wow. yourself without seeing the timer yeah. it's a nightmare i love it Same. it's insane wow. <laughs> and i love they That's, they make games no like that right like turing machine is is basically like a coding board game like they take weird risks with their games that aren't necessarily going to hit with everyone but my group tends to love them decrypto is one of my favorite crunchy word party games again i feel like party games and word games tend to just be on the lighter side. And I love the Scorpion Mask. Gay takes the risk of adding some weird crunchy twists to them. So that is our number 11. Yeah, great call, uh, Ray. I, I totally forgot that they put out Stay Cool. That game is so yeah. bizarre, but so much fun, right? It's, <laughs> I love it. And that's <laughs> one of, uh, I think, top five for me, top five sweatiest games. Like when I play, oh, I yeah. sweat in oh, that yeah. game. Right? So sweaty. Sweaty. Yeah. We should okay. do top, I heard you say a different top, word. <laughs> we should do, we should do top like real time games because it's it's Both. a genre I you either love it or you yes, hate it. You're right, I yeah. happen to I love agree. it. Same. Um and stay cool is a really fun iteration of the yeah. the name things fast genre. Exactly. Um but they just yeah, make bangers. I, uh, they make weird little bangers. I love they them. They do. And that's why it was really cool. Like uh, the two that you mentioned that I absolutely love, uh, Turing Machine, uh, that yeah. to me, that's just like witchcraft. I was like, how do you make this work? Like every time. Oh my it's God. Just, yeah. What twisted mind did that? Right. And then of <laughs> really? course, yeah, of course, Sky Team, which I, one of my favorites yeah. of last year, just an absolutely phenomenal game. Richard and I actually got to play it um, here on the show. Now that was a lot of fun. Yeah. I love yeah, Sky Yeah, that was Team. one of the best run-throughs ever. Here's yeah. a surprise. Yeah. I just looked it up. Sky Team is currently... Currently on the board game geek ranking number fifty nine, all time high strength game. Wow! So that's, I think wow. the Masque are here to stay. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, Definitely. yeah, hundred percent. I feel like, and also Sky Team would probably be the more popular choice for the oh, yeah. best yeah. game. I just mm -hmm. happen, I'm just happen to not be a big co op person, but I think objectively speaking, in terms of mass appeal. Sky Team, one hundred percent. Yeah. Well, and Dead Cells, the board game, raised over a million bucks on. Uh, oh, yeah. oh yeah, that's supposedly yeah. very good. It has an yeah, it's just a yeah. Right now. something on BGG right now. I know it's not yeah. like technically out yet, so take that with a grain of salt. But I was shocked to see yep. that. Like, I uh, especially video game to board game adaptations have a mm -hmm. yep. have a solid history. So, and I love yeah. Dead Cells. Dead Cells is a great a mm. great video game, and I'm I'm really pleasant i'm i'm cautiously optimistic by how well it's being received yeah. um, and the fact that scorpion mask is behind them is very exciting nice awesome <laughs> great choice ray okay we're all at right. the top 10 now friends um i'm gonna kick things off with our top 10 with a company that i know we've all talked about uh a few times here um and in episodes of the r and r show uh but number 10 on our collective list it's one of my favorites Stonemeyer Games, and we're going to be talking about okay. Viticulture, the Essential Edition. Uh, now, the video that I have here, this is um, the oh. older edition that Richard played through many, many, many moons ago. The original edition. The OG <laughs> nice. one. The, yeah. Um, the, the it's now still, unessential edition, apparently. right? But it's still it's still a fantastic game, right? It, one of my favorite games. I could have picked numerous games from Stonemaier. I love all their products. Um, I don't think there's a game that I don't like um, from Stonemaier. Tapestry, Scythe. I just played Rolling Realms Redux, the new one. Oh, um, nice. Yeah, that game was a banger. And But Viticulture is just near, again, near and dear to my heart. I love the theme. I love, hey, I haven't actually traveled to Italy, but I would love to travel to Italy and start a winery, um, as you do here. <laughs> and, you know, you, mm -hmm. I think it's just perfect for the theme, right? It's a worker placement game. You are literally sending your workers out to the vineyards to do the work, you know pick the grapes, harvest them, um, you know, stomp them. And then you're going to fulfill orders, uh, ship the wine, create wine and ship the wine. Um, I just think the theme, uh, as far as worker placement, it goes really well. And in true Stonemeyer fashion, um, the bits are nice. The, uh, this, this case in this game, it's uh, Beth Sobel art. I believe it was, uh, just a beautiful, beautiful, uh, game production and the essential edition. It adds in a few things to streamline it and, fixes things apparently i never played the original um uh viticulture so richard could speak more about that but the, essential... the original was a bit more rocky 
Uh, was it really? Um, that's, yeah, that's it, it got some pretty significant changes. Uh, okay. The Grande Worker radically changed its functionality mm, right. and whatnot. And I should say, all these changes for the better. Okay, Definitely. great. Yeah, and that's that's one of the things I want to point out, too. I just love that little twist on uh, the workers, right? You, you Normally, you're blocked out of spots, but the Grande Worker allows you to go to any spot, even if it's been blocked. I think yeah. that's just a neat little twist. And, um, yeah, Stonemeyer, uh, just so many bangers, and I, I, I love them all. Um, I said that I just played, uh, I literally just last night uh, played Roland Realms Redux and played some of the new realms there. And I love the fact that, you know, they have so many different games that are in Rolling Realms inspired by, you know, other games. And they, Jamie, I mean, uh, or as developers added poker and rock, paper, scissors as two. I know. Yes. Realms. Rock, paper, scissors. And that just, yeah. that cracked me up. And turned and, it into a, I turned it into a compelling rolling right. It, it, it is, things. right? Oh, and it, it reminded me of how just, uh, just the, all the games that they do are, are just, I absolutely love them. And it's just so different, right? You have Viniculture, which I always look at as like, hey, this chill worker placement, let's go make some wine. And then you have Scythe, you know, mechs and boom, 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 uh, fighting. But it's not all about fighting. You know, there's a lot of things you can do in Scythe. And then Rolling Realms, just a, a brilliant, um, rolling right and of course tapestry which i know richard uh, loves as well so tapestry is yeah. their number one game yeah i would give it to viticulture if you include the viticulture world cooperative expansion okay that's fair which has got to be one of the industry's best examples of turning a really solid competitive game into an even better cooperative game and yeah to my taste anyway yeah so yeah. i think whatever you choose folks you can't go wrong the quality of production components and everything is top notch that's why stonemar games is our number 10 yeah, yeah, can't go wrong. That's a great. That's a great did you? Thing to say. Uh, and we didn't even mention Wingspan. I know Wingspan. I know, oh, by the way, there's a game called Wingspan. Uh, the say, by the way, Wingspan, yeah. But also Apiary is. Apiary, I, huh? I'm, uh -huh. I'm in your corner, Ruel. But Viticulture, I've considered to be my favorite board game for a very, my favorite like strategy game for a very long time. Apiary is very quickly starting to nice. um, threaten Viticulture's. Oh. Wait till you see the expansion. Fantastic. Oh, <gasps> I love good? it. It's good. Oh, it's a, God, it's I it's one of those apiary. okay this element I'll never play without this now it's right, one of those nice. kinds of expansions yeah Ooh, okay that's very exciting because I I love apiary yep. yeah all right that's cool okay um Richard we're back to you for number nine are we okay yes if my notes are correct our communal number nine um is a very well established publisher been around for quite a while board and dice mm -hmm. and uh their best game uh to my taste anyway although there'd be a lot of arguing uh is windmill valley from relatively hot new designer danny garcia Hot, not just because he comes from the video game industry which i just made my whole spiel about that <laughs> earlier but uh, but still I, I remember a billion years ago when um, Borden Dice, uh, wow. yeah, roughly, I, I am that for a long time. <laughs> I was there at the genesis of Borden Dice because was it Philip and Iras? I, I do not. I'm sorry. Uh, the, the two the two co-founders. Uh, Philip's name is easy. The other one's name is like Iruiz or something like that. They were just a couple of guys who had developed a little game called Beer Imperium. And they were over in the, um, you know, you know the section where, oh, we're not actually a publisher. We're just showing our prototypes to anybody who will want to look at them. Um, you know, that, that kind of, uh, first look area. And I went over and played it. And I thought, oh, this is actually pretty neat. This is a neat little game. I don't like beer brewing or anything about it at all, but they seem nice. I hope it goes well for them. And cut to now, what, 12 years later, and they're, uh, you know, they're, they're at the top of the list. And I would say um, Board and Dice has claimed the crown, again, for my taste, of most reliable, crunchy Euro producer in the mm. industry oh, yeah. for a long time for me that used to be held by what's your game uh sadly they are no longer with us uh and but board and dice just nails it game after game after game especially after they merged with nskn which was another uh great european uh, euro style board game publisher when they came together and combined forces uh it, it just everything about them is phenomenal uh every time they've got a new game come out i've got to check it out uh uh, but Windmill Valley, I'm going to, which is their newest title, I'm going to make their Zenith. One, it's the prettiest game they've ever done. For the longest time, they have not really been known for, you know, real uh, eye catchers. But they've discovered color. 
uh, which I'm very excited for them. Uh, they, they, they've decided there's something other than beige, uh, which is great. Um, and it's it's a great it, it's it's what they do so well, coming up with wonderful mechanisms, really smooth but so satisfying gameplay that you will get done in easily under two hours, maybe even closer to an hour. Uh, their games don't overstay their welcome, and uh, yeah, and yeah, they're just. Uh, and then they support their games too. I mean, there's enough in those boxes, but they always, um, you know, whether it's Teotihuacan or Origin, I mean, they're they're always coming out with expansions and keeping their games fresh and exciting because they do a great job with their expansions. Also, I, um, you know, am just over the moon with them, and I cannot recommend uh, Windmill Valley highly enough. And, uh, oh, I see somebody in the chat mentioning Minos, uh, which was also phenomenal. A Forex mm. game that I actually enjoy. That's a rarity. Oh, wow. But I still wow. got to give it, got to give it to Windmill Valley. Yeah. Nice. Um, Born and Dice, they, they, they produce a lot of games. You know, the, the ones that I really appreciate now, uh, and I've said this before on the channel, the ones that they, they're locking down that, um, those euros that play within an hour right so, exactly yes uh founders of teotihuacan and also zapotec mm -hmm. i thought those two zapotec yeah for 45 to 60 minute games they were fantastic and i love that and i hope that they continue doing that along with all their other great games of course but along those lines i, I would hope that they keep going um you know those 45 to 60 minute games that are fantastic yeah. to be fair they did break that streak with nucleum but oh, yeah, you, 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 you just can't control Nucleum. Dave Turchy. The man yeah. is out of control. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. But for the most part, that you're right. That is a, definitely a thing of theirs that yeah. super tight, fast playing, and yet so deep and rich yeah. uh, Euros. Yeah. Just the best. Absolutely. I did get to play Nucleum for the first time recently, and my mind yeah. uh, was blown away. I was <laughs> like, oh. <laughs> yeah, but it was good. Did it you was, like it? It was really it? good. Yeah, it was really good. But it's one of those things like if I, I mean, I do want to play it again, but I would have to relearn it because it's already out of my mind. Yeah. So I need to right. like, relearn it. So, um, but hey, great choice, Richard. I, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, really, really uh, enjoy board and dice. Yeah. Okay, let's move on to number eight. Chris, it's your pick. All right. Button. Number eight, uh, this publisher has to be on my list and is on my list for a very specific reason because it is, to this day, the best example of my, my the best customer service ex experience oh. that I've ever had nice. uh, as, nice. as a consumer. This was way back when uh, I was like probably 2012, 2013, uh, and I made this list like... like I made this list before I knew the sponsor of the episode, and it just happens to correspond. <laughs> uh, it is it is Arcane Wonders who is on the list, nice. uh, and I'm putting Furnace as their number one game. Their their customer service yes. example I've I've referenced in a previous episode. I because uh, they've sponsored the, the the show before, and so I've brought it up but talking about them. But um, before I talk about Furnace, I want to talk about this, uh, and and this is this shows like how good customer service can stick with you. Like this has given me a really great favorable view of arcane wonders for years for probably 10 years maybe more 10 years and it doesn't take that much but like it it was it was when they had the license to sheriff of nottingham and and there was an issue with my bags and uh, i i wrote them and i was like hey there's something going on wrong they sent me a whole they didn't just send me one replacement they sent me like a whole pack of five bags in case there was anything else that was wrong and they sent me like some promo cards like a couple extra treasures that you could sneak into the game and like, I was so blown away yeah. by like a company going the extra mile being like, oh, you might do just just in case you happen to get like a faulty copy or something like here, have a couple of extra replacements, like we'll make sure we send them in advance, like have a couple special items. They they were like cordial. They responded so quickly. Uh, and and that has been an experience that has stuck with me, like always thinking about arcane wonders in such a favorable way uh, and then thinking about their their catalog they just keep out putting they keep putting out great stuff i mm -hmm. chose furnace as my pick uh because i think furnace is just such a because you were correct a, quite because frankly. i'm because i'm <laughs> right. correct uh, <laughs> yes. um and because I think it's such a such an interesting like bidding auction, like bidding an engine building game. Like it's it's so fascinating to make a bidding game work for two players, which I I you rarely see, and I think this one does pretty well. 
Um, the, the expansion is great as well. It's just like a really mm-hmm. great pick. Uh, but like smartphone ink, I really enjoy as mm-hmm. well. Everybody would want to put Foundations of Rome mm-hmm. up on this list. Mm-hmm. Uh, Foundation of the Metropolis, now the accessible version of that, like to see a company that sees their big game to know that people are cheap like me and people don't like have a bunch of money to spend, still want to share that design and create like a retail version of that. Uh, the, the Arcane Wonders are the people's champions. Uh, and I and <laughs> even me spending so much time as I do on Kickstarter, um, and they don't really use Kickstarter, I still take note of Arcane Wonders. Like I exist so much in the crowdfunding sphere uh, and not as much in like the, the direct to retail sphere. And yet I still am always wanting to take note of what our Arcane Wonders is putting out. Then bringing comic hunters back to the market. Oh, like I yeah. think, mm-hmm. I, I think uh, Aquatica too uh, is was one that I know is super well received. That's one that I actually haven't played from there. World Wonders is great as well. Mm-hmm. They just, yep. they, they put out a lot of really great considered stuff uh, I like their viewpoint as a company. And again, it is that uh, when I was thinking of top publishers, I think of Arcane Wonders because of that customer service experience way, way back when, like when, when I was, you know, just I had played sheriff at somebody else's house and then and then I got my own copy, was excited and it had an issue and they solved it and went above and beyond. And I just think about companies who go above and beyond. And that's what I was yeah. really wanted to to focus and highlight way better customer service than my next pick. Honestly, horrible customer service, my next pick. Um, but, but I like their games too much. Probably the worst customer service. Oh um, but, but, you can't just say that and move on. But um, I, I, think, I think like great customer service and taking care of their con- consumers and customers is huge for me. Yeah. Uh, and, and they made a fan for life back then uh, just by, by helping me out. So nice. Arcane Wonders yeah. for sure was going to be at the top of my list, regardless of, of anything. Yeah. One thing I would have mentioned to, about them as well is, I mean, they do develop a lot of the games internally, but a lot of their catalog is stuff they brought from all around the world, mm-hmm. from you know other smaller publishers. And that's a real skill to be able to pick the good ones. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And they they pick the yeah. right ones yeah. over and Video over Game Champions again. Champions is great. That was yeah. Yeah. a game from before, right? Yeah. That, that game yeah. is phenomenal. Yeah, um, and just mm-hmm. just the hoops they had to go through to get Comet Hunters, you know, brought over here. Mm-hmm. That's, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yep. a great story. But yeah, awesome choice, Chris. And um, let's move on to Ray. You've got our number seven. All right. So <clears throat> my number seven uh, is a publisher that I will always pay attention to. I think more so than any other publisher on this list. This is a publisher that doesn't put out a lot of games, but when they do, you automatically always have my attention. And that is Leader Games. Mm-hmm. That is largely oh. due to Cole Worley's design prowess, mm-hmm. but you can't yeah. discount the production value, the art cohesion that Leader Games does bring to Cole's designs. Mm-hmm. Um, Leader Games, again, they I what I personally what I love about them as someone who doesn't have a lot of time and <laughs> is <laughs> like overwhelmed sometimes by an oversaturation in our market. I love that they don't put out that many games. I can every year pretty consistently pick up the leader game for release, try it out. And it's always, I will say, leader games are not always hits for everyone, but they're, it's always mm. unlike anything else you've ever played. And that is why they're so high up on my list. I love unique experiences when it comes to board games. And again, a lot of this is owed to Cole's designs, but with leader games, they will always have my attention because they have taken the time to I wanted to say how's Cole, but he's not homeless. I mean, like to, to <laughs> give him a space to take the time to design games the way he wants to. And, and again, coming from the publisher side, not every publisher would let a designer work on games for years. You have to kind of keep that wheel going. And I really respect that Leader Games gives Cole the space to make games unlike anything else on the market. And the game that I picked as their best game is Arcs. I'm obsessed with this. I know that's mm-hmm. like... That's the boring pick, but boy, howdy. I I, <laughs> I freaking love, I love ARCs. It's so phenomenal. Um, so yeah, I just love that, again, as we're sort of approaching a bit of an oversaturation, there's just so much stuff coming out. Leader Games always leads with quality. They lead with something unique. And up again, personally, for my preferences, I love that they don't throw a ton out every year. It allows me to really keep up to date with what they're making. Um, and they always put out something really weird and unlike anything else. And I really respect that. Yeah, the I I love that they do these like really you know different types of games, right? But the art uh, just makes it so approachable. Yeah, that right? cohesion, right? Mm-hmm. I Kyle really Farron, love just that. Amazing. I really yeah, do. I, I do. Too. I know it's superficial, but I love that I can always tell 
a leader yeah. game. And there is something yep. to that. It makes them taking that risk and sticking with the same artist for every game, but doing different themes, right? They didn't just yep. pick, they didn't just stay with your woodland creatures, right? Mm -hmm. They yeah. have done the fact that that art translated to sci-fi with arcs. I was really, really impressed by yeah. that. I love as a consumer that I can always look at a leader game, know it's a leader game. It helps with that branding consistency, yep. Yep. Uh, which is something I really, I really respect. Yeah. I always, I always talk about a game. I think it's underrated. Uh, Fort. Um, it Fort, is, yeah, yeah their take on deck that. building, yeah. and but Very you know, game. the second you see that cover, oh, that's a leader game, right? I mean, mm -hmm. it's cute mm -hmm. art or whatever, it's super approachable. Uh, yeah, I, I, I love leader games as well, Ray. Great choice. Yeah. Okay. And the new Root expansion is currently out. On That's right. right they just raised yep. another million dollars. Those mm -hmm. amazing leader games, of course, folks. Of course yeah. they did. <laughs> yeah. They have a super passionate uh, fan base as well, which is really neat to see. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's move on to number six. And, oh, it looks like I'm at number six. And that's you. I, yeah, that's me. Um, I picked a, a company that just, for me, just, I don't know, rec it seems like recently they just really – uh, jumped out of my radar and I looked at their catalog of games like, oh man, they put a lot of great stuff out. And the one I'm going to single out, um, I mean, I had to get the good, the one and only doctor, the good Dr. Kenizzi on this list somehow. So we're going to talk about our number six, 25th century games. And the one I chose oh. was raw. Um, that production okay. is absolutely phenomenal. Now, 25th century games, you know, just looking at their list of games, they do a really wide variety of stuff. Like, uh, things from Raw, you know, a classic uh, Kanitsi game. But they also have stuff like Ghost Love Candy, which is a light um, <laughs> Halloween uh, card uh, set collection game. They also have Three Sisters, a super crunchy roller ride game, mm -hmm. one of my favorites. And then they have a, a very light tile lane game, which I think is a terrific uh, family game called uh, Junk Drawer and also Color Field, which we did here on the channel uh, about a year ago. Um they just announced Hamster Roll, which looks so wacky. And I know it's been out of print for a while, but it's mm -hmm. a, a dexterity type game where you literally have a hamster roll and you're placing like domino type figures on it. But anyways, they do a wide range of games. And But of course, I'm going to talk about um, Raw. Our friend Kimberly Tolson, Tabletop Tolson's there, uh, is showing her, her demo of it. It's a brilliant, uh, if not the best auction game that Kenitsi's done. But what, or if it's not the best, it's one of the best. Uh, set collection and... Um, uh, bidding and it's just so good. And just, we all want to do that whole thing where we, you know, call for the auction, go raw, 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 raw. That's, <laughs> that's the best part of the game. Uh, but it, it's so much fun. And, you know, a game this good, really, it deserved the treatment it got from uh, 25th century. It's yeah. got, you know, beautiful ENO tool art and graphic design. It's got nice chunky pieces or chunky pieces. And hmm. oh, it just makes me want to play the game. I'm looking at it right now. It's like, oh, I love this game and I love uh, what they did to it. And that's why we went for our collective number six, 25th century games. Yeah, that's an interesting pick. choice. They and you're right to uh, mention their production quality. They have so stepped it up over the last few years. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think anybody ever expected they'd ever play a version of Raw so pretty, yep. considering where <laughs> it has come from. <laughs> right. Um, and yeah, and, and then they're just continuing to do that. I mean, they, uh, you know, I mean, they were never really known. They were known for, oh yeah, 21st century game, right? Them too. Mm -hmm. But I mean, they are really stepping up to the big leagues now. Yeah. Uh, you know, spending the extra money, getting the high quality components, the amazing amazing art and then the really solid uh gameplay too yeah i i should mention as well i know i talked about it before but uh kohaku which is a tile lane game but the the deluxe version it did the most beautiful game i have in my collection they had like these acrylic tiles and the acrylic tiles were, like sort of 3d like pond and koi fish like michelle and i whenever we play it we just we take our time playing the game because it's so beautiful but um oh that's the transparent the tiles, transparent, right? yeah that it, represent the water and yep. you see the tile underneath the, yeah, yeah that's pr that's it, so pretty it's so pretty yeah but hey that's our number six what do we have for number five richard well i'm glad you asked um <laughs> uh, this is another i want to say it's an up and comer but i think they've been around for a while but over the last few years uh like my previous entry they have really caught fire they are Catch up games, mm. uh, a French uh, publishing house, and um, you know, like I said, they've been around for a long time. But a few years ago, they completely blew me away with the loop. 
which is, as far as I'm concerned, their best game. Although I would not blame anybody for giving their best game to Far Away that really oh, caught yeah. fire last year, or even Castle Combo, which is blowing up huge right now. And in fact, it's those three games, plus After Us, uh, which they've also put somewhere out in between the last few years. Th- th- this is an insanely high quality four amazing games back to back. All of them have you know um, either made it into mine or my wife's top 10 of the year or just missed them. Uh, and I, I, th- I don't know what's in the drinking water over there, but whatever they're doing, they need to keep it up. I will give it to the loop because as I've mentioned in the past, I would say this is the greatest pandemic inspired co-op game there is in the market period other than pandemic itself. I mean, you know, Matt Leacock created a format and a formula for co-op that is pretty much the de facto standard and there are so many games every year that come out and do it but the loop uh is so far above and beyond everything else because a lot of co-op games don't understand the importance of giving you some semblance of control by being able to um you know, somewhat predict what's coming. And The Loop does a great job with this, uh, both with the way its central element, this little marble tower that you spin around uh, that determines where the evil, um, what's it, Dr. Fu or Dr. Foe will attack throughout time. And you're rushing around, uh, you know, trying to get ahead of them and saying, well, okay, this is where I can reach, but I don't have to go there because we're not in any danger. But if I end my turn there, I'll be able to deck build the perfect card for me to make a looping deck of cards because the time travel uh, uh, I- implementation is really, really nice. But um, I can see what uh, if if Dr. Foe points over to the West, we lose. So I have to make tough, tough choices throughout the game of where to set myself up, where to go. The loop is amazing. It's got um, some really nice co- expansion content, too. Um, and I mean, that's my personal favorite because unlike Ray, I love cooperative <laughs> games. I am the anti-Ray in that regard. <laughs> but if I were on the competitive side more, Far Away has got to be one of the uh, most clever new ideas in card games that uh, we have seen uh, across the industry. And I think it was very, very deserving to get so much love and attention. And then Castle Combo is just blowing up right now. Um, you know, those four, and After Us is such a gorgeous, brilliant core idea too. And it's, it's a bit too gateway-ish, a little too light for me, but I still thought the mechanisms were great. Those four games back-to-back make whatever catch-up does next absolute must-see. And to me, that's the ultimate arbiter of how I would rank these things. Uh, oh, you tell me the publisher? Okay, well, I'd like to see it. Oh, I must see it. Oh, I will you know, knock you out of the way uh, mm-hmm. if you stand between me and whatever their next game is. And that's where Catch-Up Games is. And that's why they come in at number five. Nice. I I had no idea it was catch up games. I you know I played all the versions that were released by Pandasaurus. Pandasaurus picked up right. all these games, right? The right. Loop. Pandasaurus yeah. is their partner, bringing their stuff to America, basically. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, those three games you mentioned, Richard, The Loop, Far Away, and Castle Combo, fantastic games. I especially Far Away. I totally one hundred percent agree with you. That that game was mind blowing to me. Just the way you build and then score the opposite way. I think mm-hmm. it's just a yeah. really fun. So game. simple, but so yeah. deep. So deep. Yep. Great choice. Okay, let's move on to number four, and we are back to Chris. It's back to me. I was hoping that we could talk longer so that I could then swap with Ray, because I know Ray's got a heart out of five. <laughs> oh, I was yeah. going to be like, hey, Ray, you know, you can take number four. You just take number four. Go ahead. And then I could bump mine up one extra point. But that nefarious plan uh, failed. Um <laughs> Uh, I, I do think it is it is interesting. I also also had the loop as like Pandasaurus in my oh, head. And yep. so it, mm-hmm. it, it talks about like the difficulty of this, like the localization. Versus, yeah. Like mm-hmm. who brings what, right? The conversation we were having a, li- a little bit at the beginning. Um, this this is also another company who has a, who, who definitely takes some some stuff and puts it under their umbrella. But I'm I'm giving to them because they have my favorite game of all time. And and I like so much of their catalog. This is come on games. Um, the rising sun is the pick that I picked yep. because, uh, I just think, well, rising sun is the best game out of their trilogy. I could, I think people could argue Cthulhu death may die. I think, uh, I think people could, people could argue blood rage. <laughs> you know, I think people could argue zombicide. Uh, I was even just scrolling through their, their stuff and, 
beforehand and and remembering oh yeah they they have this they have this they've now even taken this this uh ip on but they have marvel united they have massive darkness 2 which is incredible yeah. also my top 10 i just played dune war for arrakis the other day with my buddy zach and it was fantastic um true Vong legends i even enjoyed you know like <laughs> it's 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 really good uh, their whole catalog just hit with me. They're, they're, they're great in terms of getting a bunch of dice and a bunch of minis and just chucking them all on the table. And I know that Kaman could be cheating in terms of like all the other games that they have absorbed under their umbrella, but their, their own games that they put forward, I always find oh, yeah. that re really hit with me. Mm -hmm. uh, and so even though I have had so many bad customer experiences with them as a customer, like <laughs> uh, during the Kaman time machine, that was just a colossal failure on their part just absolutely horrid people had things in their cart i had I, I was trying to organize a group a group buy and i had things in my cart and they just got removed from my cart and i wasn't able to buy them oh. uh, after i had like paid for them it was just like a, a horrible colossal failure people get mad at them all the time and yet people will always come back and i think that is due to the quality of their games uh, and i think it's due to like that they they make such great fun stuff and they're the type of company who can, yeah, push me around. I don't care because I'm going to like your games a lot, you know, and I can make that sacrifice inside myself. I, I can take a bit of abuse and I would do it for come on. Um, I, I just think like Rising Sun is far and away my favorite game of all time. I love it was my first Kickstarter that I ever I ever backed. Oh, nice. uh, I saw I, I and I was like, I read through the rule book and I was like, this is going to be good for me. And it was I, I just I really like their games. Uh, and so I had to put them as as number one on the list and number one in my heart. It is uh, come on <laughs> or seem uh -huh. depending how you uh, you're feeling on what year it is because it <laughs> yeah. keeps changing <laughs> yeah exactly cool mini or not <laughs> yeah cool mini yep. or not <laughs> the artist formerly go. known as cool <laughs> mini or not, mini or not. <laughs> <laughs> that's gonna be 2025 they're rebranding that's right oh. um, yeah great choice yeah i, yeah, I i'm a huge fan of blood rage that's uh, one of my top 10 and but uh, any one of those mini games that they have there just absolutely brilliant to production value i played a bunch of the zombicides i think still my favorite is uh, green horde i, I really like that mm -hmm. one uh but yeah uh, it's definitely those games aren't for everyone it's a different you know it's uh not for me. they're not for everyone but i i have enjoyed yeah, my experience with uh come on simon and cool mini or not yeah. yeah i'll throw one more uh that nobody played nobody remembers but i would probably give it their top notch of stuff that they developed themselves rather than mm -hmm. you know brought over from others uh kick-ass the board game oh, oh yeah. yeah is yeah. really good it uh, okay. does a better job of capturing the oh i'm a superhero trying to balance my vigilante life and my personal life um huh. with the with a city that's on fire it's really really good nice. although i think probably most people probably give to marvel united which is actually so marvel united is, is very special too yeah i think Cool. Yeah, very special in that it's it's their worst game. <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> wow. I, it didn't hit with me. It wow. didn't hit with me. <laughs> wow. You're so wrong. That's just amazing how wrong you are. I feel so bad for you. Mm. I feel pretty comfortable. So. Okay. <laughs> uh, nice. Uh, let's move on. Ray, you, you've got to stop this feud from broiling hey. over. Yeah. <laughs> stop. Well, I'm going to I'm going to talk about a publisher that Richard can't yell at me about because Richard hasn't played any of their games. Uh, oh. This is everyone, everyone <laughs> oh. thrown, everyone sigh, no one's surprised. Uh, my R number three is Oink. I yeah. love Oink. I yeah. think they are so clever and so unique. This is an, in a similar vein to Leader Games where not all of their games will hit with everyone. There are some weird chances that they take and they don't always hit with everyone, but it'll always be a unique experience that is very unlike other things that you've played. Some of their some of their favorite games of mine that they make they have um, Deep Sea Adventure, Fake Artist, The Insider, Drapolter, and my fa my my favorite game from Oink, which is the one we're seeing on screen right now, is Scout. This won the Spiel for a reason. This is like my mm. favorite card game. I think Scout is so incredibly brilliant, and I just think Oink in general, the creativity that is required to fit within their box limitations, I'm always interested to see how they do it. Whenever I hear an Oink game briefing, I'm like, cool, great. How do you fit that in like a six inch box? That is always something I will pay attention to because I think it's really clever. Um, I 
these days more so than price space is rapidly becoming mm. an issue oh, for yeah. me because some of these games oh my god like as much as i love ivy studios veiled fate does not need to be not just as expensive as it is <laughs> yeah. but as big as it is that box is massive and i live in a small house my partner and i move a lot so how i can fit i can fit 50 oink games i can fit their entire catalog in a single calyx shelf and i think that is very important to me personally. Yeah. I love a lot of their games. I think they're really unique. Again, there are definitely some some weird ones that aren't going to hit with everyone, but it's always going to be a unique, weird, and very creative experience to fit in that tiny little boxes. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, okay. just going along with That's the right. other companies talked about, Ray, just Oint Games, you know what an Oint game is, right? All yeah. you have to do is see like that minimalist, um, you know, artwork, that little box. And I just, I picked this up recently, uh, Doko John. Um, oh, I haven't mm. played that one. I just bought it because there was a pug on the cover. Uh, we have two pugs. <laughs> I hadn't played. And apparently it's a um, little... A great, yeah, great reason. It, apparently it's just a little social deduction type of game. So it's Love not really it. my jam, but it's got a pug. Of course, I'm going to buy it. And oh, it, I can I'll fit, like you said, I can fit 50 of these into, a, into yeah. a one shelf. So yeah, yeah. I, I love this choice, Ray. Well done. I do love that we're going from arguably the largest box <laughs> publisher on the list <laughs> yeah. uh, to the, the smallest list. box publisher. They're so and that cute it's too. Just they... right ahead. I, I love the storage, the, the space saving that you can get from, from Oink Games. That and is they a come great and they give you these little pitch. carrying cases now, and they're all so cute. And again, like it is superficial, but the visual cohesion with a lot of their games and, and the minimalism is just lovely. They're just, they're a delight. They're a delight to have in my home. I have so many of them speaking from earlier about like only wanting to put publishers on this list mm -hmm. where I've played yep. a good chunk of their catalog because they're such a low investment space wise for me to have. I'm like, sure, maybe it'll be bad, but I want to try it. I want to see what they did with it. Um, yeah. And so, yeah, that's why Oink is our number three. Yeah. Great. Someday I will play Someday. one of their games. <laughs> but for right now, what I Travolta. love about it is that they're Travolta. safe picks because you can't be mean to me about them because you don't know. <laughs> so for right now, they're such an easy pick for me. Yep. <laughs> yep. You, you've you convinced me 100%. Uh -huh. You just need to Good. start making fake BGG oink profiles <laughs> for, for future episodes. Be like, yeah, sorry, this is uh, this yeah. is Flopsy Doodle by Oink Games. <laughs> Flopsy Doodle. <laughs> oh, Amazing. Man. I love it. Hey, we've got two more to talk about. I've got our number two, then Richard's going to follow up with our number one on the list. Uh, number two, I absolutely love the games um, by this company. I don't know what's up in in the water up in the Pacific Northwest, but mm -hmm. something is up because they produce a banger after banger. This is Flat Out oh. Games, and of course, I was going to yeah. pick Cascadia. Um, they oh they produce God. so many wonderful games. These all speak to me. They're just my jam. I love Cascadia, one of my favorite um, tile lane games of all time. Uh, but, you know, Flat Out Games, they do Calico. They do Verdant. They do Fit to Print. They do Point City. They did Point Salad. They did Knitting Circle, which is coming out soon. They did Truffle Shuffle. I mean, I every single game that I, that I played by them, I can honestly say I've enjoyed the heck out of them. Um, I'm highlighting Cascadia because, hey, that just won a Spiel des Jahres uh, award. Hey, that's that's pretty cool. Um, in Cascadia, of course, you're building your habitats, you're placing the wildlife on them, scoring them uh, differently depending on what cards are out. They actually have a digital version that they just, um, it's in beta right now. They'll be released in digital version. I got to play the digital version. I have it right now. I may have played it twice this morning before we came on live. It is a <laughs> wonderful implementation. Um, again, flat out games. I know a lot of them move on to, I think, AEG um, picks up a lot of them. But, you know, that design uh, trio, Molly Johnson, Robert uh, Malone, I, I believe. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Molly Johnson, yes. Robert Melvin, Melvin, and Sean Stankowitz. Sean, thank Whoa. you, Rich. I knew you would have it. I knew you'd have Whoa, it. Thank yes. you. Locked and loaded. Yes. Uh, I say them quite often yeah. because their games are amazing and I keep covering them. It, Knitting exactly. Circle is crowdfunding right now, folks. Yes. It's one of their best. Circle. Absolutely. Yes. I just played it and I will be playing it um, next week. You After this video, oh. when you see the video, I'm going to be playing it with the designer, Emily Vincent, online. We're going to have a lot oh, of Oh, nice. Fun. So, cool. Yeah, I, I had to put it out flat out. I just, everything, um, Michelle and I, we love their games, and they get to the table quite often here in the Gaviola uh, household. So that's our number two, Flat Out Games. Such okay. a good one. I feel like nice. we all had this on our list. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, and you, I mean, does everybody agree with Cascadia? I don't think Richard does. No, I, I have to give it to Calico. Leading question. Calico. So, yeah. Richard, tell us. I'm going to give it to Verdant. 
Verdant, oh, Calico. No. I can't I can't fault you for that, quite frankly. <laughs> mm-hmm. Verdant is phenomenal too. Yeah. Um I like them all. Cascadia with the expansion, I'd probably put it on top. Okay. But without, uh, it's gotta be Calico. Yeah. I, that's, I can't I'm, argue against that. I mean, I love them all. So, but I went with Cascadia because yeah. you know it's. I, I just love everything about Cascadia. It's a banger. Yeah. All right. Yeah. That leaves us with. Then there was one, Richard. Then there was one. Yeah. It's all up to you. Yeah. And we perhaps this is one of those times when we maybe should have done a little bit more collaboration or cross pollinization of ideas because our combined number one is AEG Alder. <laughs> 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 um, nice. I was unaware. Uh, although I should yeah. say, while as you pointed out, AEG um, mm-hmm. is a frequent partner with Flat Out Games. AEG has an amazing catalog beyond oh, just yeah. um, that yeah. Flat Out stuff. And in yeah. fact, for me, their number one game has to be Tiny Towns, which is in my uh, top thirty games of all time. It's an absolutely phenomenal game um, uh, because it. Well, it's kind of the antithesis of what I was talking about earlier. Uh, it, it, it is the purest example of, okay, you have incredibly tight restrictions. You have a four by four grid to build this tiny town in. Every turn, you're going to put a cube out there and you're running out of space desperately. And if I could be in control of all the cubes I'm going to place, oh, it would be a piece of cake. But unfortunately, I'm playing with Ray and she keeps <laughs> calling for glass. She knows I have no space for glass. She's going out of her way to build nothing but churches with nothing but stained glass windows so that I keep getting stuck with glass over and over again. Um, and it's it's an absolutely brilliant game. Every expansion, uh, you don't need any of them. Just the core game is so perfect, but the expansions add so much more. But I mean, back to AEG. Yes, of course, everything you just said about flat out games, I believe AEG has published all of their games for wider distribution. Um, but then you've got, you know, the collected, almost the entire collected works of John D. Clare, uh, you know, where, you know, you've got, you know, Mystic Veil, but on the other end, you've got one, you know, they're, they don't often do big games, uh, but what, Edge of Darkness and uh, the Pirate Game. Dead Reckoning. Which I can't think of the name of. Dead Reckoning. Yeah. Uh, Dead Reckoning, thank you. So, I mean, they do it all. They do small, fast things. They do big, elaborate things. Mm-hmm. But, um, you know, uh, what's it? Uh, right here behind me, Guild of Merchant Explorers is yeah. an amazing game and definitely... I think it got nominated, but didn't win. But it should have won for Spiel des Jahres. And uh, Santa Monica, go to Japan. Yep. Just, it, they are an interesting... I don't know what the internal story of them is. For the yeah. longest time, I mean, they were known as a completely different publisher. We just do, um, you know, collectible card game stuff. You know, the old... Yep. Uh, can't think of the name of them. Um, I think they still publish them to this day. Legend of the Five But Rings. at some... Thank you. The Legend of the Five mm. Rings, where they really got their start. And then, uh, you know, and of course, their big breakout hit was, was it, is it Smash Up? Love right? Letter. Love Letter and mm-hmm. Smash Up. Lo- right. right? Or, well, I mean, yeah, Smash Up was a huge deal, but then you're right. Love Letter, mm-hmm. um, mm. I think, put them on a different trajectory. Um, it's probably Love Letter, where they started, you know, remember when Love Letter was the beginning of like a whole series of games set yep. in the same contiguous Love Letter universe? <laughs> well, they dropped that. But um, still, I think that p- maybe that's what pushed them in a direction that put them where they are today. I would say the most reliable publisher of fast, elegant, tiny little experiences that are just, they just give and give and give, that never get old, never get tired, that are so satisfying to play and are just so bang on reliable. Game after game, I know uh, it's going to be one that Jen and I love. Hey, in part because they've worked with great partners like number two on the list, Flat Out Games, (laughs) or great designers like John D. Clare with Space Base and a million other games besides. But that's just the start. Um, Mm -hmm. Freaking, freaking dog lover. Yeah. Why isn't Dog Lover the best-selling card game of the last five years? It should be. <laughs> um, it's amazing. And um, oh my God, does anybody remember Captain? Is the Captain is dead? I remember Another that one game. of the greatest modern oh, co-ops. Yeah. Uh, Walking in Burano is amazing. Yeah. Yeah. They just knock it out of the park over and over and yeah. over. They never fail. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, I mean, I mean, I know for some people, oh well, they do something other than Thunderstone, and Thunderstone is great too. Yeah. But. I mean, I'm, they just, they, they they seem to not be able to fail. And I'm very impressed by their catalog, which is why they are combined number one. 
Yeah. Alder Ackner it's, Enchainment, or is there also known AEG? AEG. Such yeah. a good pick. I I had that exact I had that exact pick on my list. Uh, AEG oh, really? Tiny yeah. Towns as my favorite. I had that exact mm-hmm. one. Same. Um, I feel like one that gets overlooked that's one of my favorite is Whirling Witchcraft. I yeah. love oh my gosh, that's a yes. such a clever game. So good. But good, interesting games. And that like the it's a, almost a testimony to like that's probably my second favorite AEG game, and it gets overlooked all the time because there's so many good ones to pick from. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's, it's they're so solid. You know, I gotta yeah. say one thing about Warland and Witchcraft. Uh, you'll be watching this in October 2024, folks, until the end ah. of the month. And AEG, you can get it for ten bucks. They have a sale you on Warland and Witchcraft for ten dollars. Yeah. Oh my God, that's that is the so best deal in board gaming. For $10? It's ten dollars. Yeah, so I played it on uh, Good Morning Society with Becca Scott. She loved it so much. What? She and the other producers in the studio at that moment when I said that they all bought a copy. Uh, yeah, ten dollars each. It's yeah. so good. It's fantastic. But it's also, yeah. comes with little cardboard cauldrons and yeah, stuff. The cauldron. it comes in a box like this big. Yep. Yeah, like yeah. ten dollars. That's $10. crazy. Go get it. It's I love steal. that game. Go it doesn't it, get the love it deserves. Yeah. So good. So yeah, this has been great, folks. This has been our top 20 board game publishers and their best games. Thanks for tuning in. Um, We've got a couple of minutes before we uh, end things here. Uh, We want to talk about some honorable mentions real quick, Richard, um, Chris, and Ray. Yes. I Uh, promise I will go fast. Let's go fast. We'll we'll, uh, run them down. Since I'm live, and I can't just blather on. (laughs) So I said right at the beginning, what I chose not to do was talk about publishers where it's really all about that one designer. Right. Mm. I was trying to go for breath. But if I I would have had a completely different list if I hadn't put that caveat on myself, my list would have been Red Raven Games oh. for Ryan Lockett. Yep. Great. Um, you know, I, I, I have to and it broke my heart not to give um Ryan his due. But again, I made this choice so I'd have a broader range. Um, delicious. Everything Vladimir Suchi does mm. is amazing. And that's just a little him and his wife putting out every year one of the best games of the year without fail. I, I would have mentioned Stonemeyer because while they do a lot of great stuff and Wingspan and AP are great, I'd be there primarily for Jamie when it boils right down to it at, at the end yep. of the day. Um, I, if I'd wanted to get into a fight with Chris, I could have mentioned Queen Games. Um, <laughs> and I thought <laughs> I, I almost thought of doing great. this just to do it because, of course, now they are the House of Feld. And, yeah. um, yep. and, the and they're knocking of out the catalog part. is just like what do you have oh, yeah. against Feld, Queen right? Games? Oh, Chris. nothing. It's oh, now no. just because <laughs> I honestly forget. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then also, uh, my number one when we did our top 10 designers, my number one was Eilis Vincent when we did that on the last episode. Mm-hmm. And though I'd have to give kind of this weird amalgamation crossover between Aporta and Chili Fox, the two uh yeah. publishers that he is the mm-hmm. co founder and pretty much co creative lead on everything they do. So I'd combine them into one to get him on board because there's just something really special there and yeah. then if i were doing other stuff i mean man i mean you guys mentioned a lot of them here's my big surprise nobody mentioned devere yeah devere, you know, I, top of my short list. My i was I haven't slayed enough yeah i thought somebody Did else everybody thinks it. somebody else was gonna <laughs> I put thought, on so, their list. yeah i thought chris yeah. was gonna put on for sure so i was like oh, i thought it. somebody else was gonna do it <laughs> i <laughs> I had at the very, very top of my short list. I, have oh. not, I feel like I just haven't quite played enough to your games, but I feel like mm. as of the last couple years, oh my God, they have like really, I don't know if I was just like sleeping on them or something. I just wasn't yeah. aware of how great they were, but I feel like the last couple years, they have been consistently in yeah. Yeah. most anticipated yep. games of every convention. Yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah. So yeah. Ray, you got any honorable mentions before you got to get out of here? Uh, I had... Uh, I had a couple. I had all play. I like I yep. all play can be a little hit or miss for me, so I ended up leaving them off my short list. I had button shy again. As oh, well I love button shy. Boxes. Oh, that's a good choice. Really, yeah, really love choice. them. Um, again, just haven't quite played enough, but I do really respect the design philosophy and the production quality on the little wallet games. I had Thunder Griff on here as well. Um, Darwin's Journey oh, sure. was one of my favorite games of last year. Mm. Um, and then that was it. And then I then I fell apart a little bit because then I was like, then I love everything. But, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Cool. Five, those, would, those my yeah those are great i was yeah. getting into love everything territory too yeah and then um, i was like okay yeah. we get it like yeah <laughs> yeah some other ones that I had were uh, like Roxy was on my shortlist, which got, yep. got yep. said. CGE was on my shortlist, like with yep. Last Will, oh, I yeah. would have put them. Yep. Just cause I know they got they got ton. They're another. That's a, they're, I love that's a wild yeah. favorite CGE game deep yeah. cut, and I respect that. Oh very yeah, nice. that's uh, a good that's a good one. Um, Chip oh, Theory, I, I, I would have given <laughs> given shout out to Chip, Chip Theory. Theory yep. I just think oh. like talk about good customer service. I think Chip Theory has like really cares yep. about their community and has fostered a really awesome community. And then I have Mind Clash too for the, all their crunch. Yeah. deliciousness um, but uh, yeah. 
I would have put uh, an acronym for that for me. Nice. But uh, yeah, and then and then just everyone, I was like, man, that's good, that's good. And then so many that everybody said, yeah. Was, and then you, yeah, you go down a you go down yeah. like a rabbit yeah. hole of like, I, but yeah, I, I almost put a porta too, and I was like, no, I can't do a porta. Like, yeah. <laughs> I I gotta I gotta roll it back. But I'm glad that you gave them a shout out, Richard, because like oh, a porta, yeah, yeah. the porta chili fox combo is like <laughs> one to look out for. Yeah, right on. yeah. Uh, I'll just mention a uh, one um one of my favorite small box publishers, Pencil First uh, Games. They do a lot of uh, stuff that I enjoy. Oh, they're lovely. Uh, yeah. Lovely. Rare for us, yeah. and wonderful one knock cabinet sunrise at the studio yeah mm-hmm. cool uh why don't we get out of here richard can we uh have you um talk about our sponsor oh. and we'll get out of here well folks thank you to sponsor of the show arcane wonders and uh, their new little stock market simulation vegetable stock have a nice day everybody talk to you later so long bye-bye